Skull Kid, the mischievous imp turned apocalyptic harbinger from the Legend of Zelda series. Skull Kids are described as children who wandered into the lost woods of Hyrule, never to be seen again, and turning into these wooden imps. Most Skull Kids just like to keep to themselves and play music, though on occasion they'll make themselves known to other children when they want to play. But the Skull Kid we're talking about today is very different because this one is in possession of one of the most dangerous artifacts in video game history, Majora's Mask. This mask was created to seal the power of a truly evil monster, and would later be used by an ancient tribe for bewitching hexing rituals. Over time, the mask would come in possession of the Happy Mask salesman, but it wouldn't be long before it was stolen from him by a curious Skull Kid who he happened to cross paths with. When the child donned the mask, it awakened to him great and terrible powers, enough to curse the land of Termina and doom it to a lunar apocalypse. And now, he's here today to spread his mischief and malice to the world of Super Smash Brothers, intent on escaping his Assist Trophy prison to wreak havoc on all he comes across. So getting right into things, the Skull Kid would be a light and somewhat floaty character. So as such, he'd have two floaty jumps and no additional movement options. The Skull Kid as a fighter is certainly an interesting case. He's a rather bratty child, so he'll have plenty of attacks that reflect that, but there is still the mask that he possesses, or rather, the mask that possesses him. Majora's Mask gives the Skull Kid access to many forms of dark magic and evil powers, so he will be pulling plenty from that as well. I will also bring up that in the game Hyrule Warriors, Skull Kid fights with the aid of his fairy companions, Tattle and Tail, using an ocarina to command their movements. However, while there will be a few references to that warrior's moveset here, I actually will not be using Tattle or Tail for any of these attacks. In fact, they're not even in this moveset. I get that they're pretty important characters to the Skull Kid's story, but considering the context of the game, and how they're actually against him once he starts getting in too deep with the mask's influence, neither fairy will be making any appearance in this moveset. So with that said, to start things off with the Skull Kid's jab, he'll be using one of his own personal weapons unrelated to the mask, his flute. Used in Ocarina of Time, if Link tries approaching Skull Kids as an adult, the Skull Kids use their flutes as blowguns to shoot needles at him, and that'll be what Skull Kid uses here for his jab, making this a one-hit semi-spammable projectile jab where he shoots a needle forwards to deal small flinching damage. For his dash attack, he does a single full moon cartwheel forward, launching any foe in his way on contact. This references the flashback where we see Skull Kid playing with Tattle and Tail. The side tilt can be the first attack that utilizes the mask's dark powers. I call it Majora's Barrage, referencing an attack used by Majora's incarnation during his final boss battle, as well as his third strong attack used in Hyrule Warriors, Skull Kid throws a dark energy ball forwards at the ground that explodes on impact. The move is called a barrage because this attack can actually be spammed. Skull Kid will keep rapidly throwing out dark orbs so long as you keep mashing the attack button while holding forward. These orbs do act as projectiles up until they hit the ground. Foes hit by the orbs directly will be launched by the resulting explosion. Getting hit by the explosion only also launches foes, but it launches them at slightly higher angles. And if the orbs are thrown off stage where there's no ground, they'll still explode once they reach ground level adjacent to Skull Kid's feet. For Skull Kid's up tilt, I call this move 12 Hours. It simply has Skull Kid do a floating 360 degree backflip kick. But while he does this, he looks at the screen and Majora's Mask creepily remains static on his face. The down tilt can have Skull Kid playfully do a squat dance, doing a few Cossack kicks while slowly moving forward as he does. The first bunch of kicks only deal flinching damage, with that last kick being the one that launches foes into lower angles. While this is a playful thing that I could see Skull Kid doing, it's really a reference to one of the many dance moves that Majora's incarnation does to taunt Link. For the Skull Kid's side smash, he could use Majora's Laser, an attack used by Majora's Mask during the first phase of his final boss fight, and was also referenced for the Skull Kid's second strong attack in Hyrule Warriors. Here, the mask will shoot a laser from its eyes right into the ground in front of Skull Kid, then quickly move up to fire the laser outward. 
The laser does count as a projectile, by the way, so just like during the boss fight, it can be reflected. For the up smash, Skull Kid does a spinning uppercut imbued with dark magic to send his foes straight to the moon. This simple attack is his first strong attack in Hyrule Warriors. The down smash can be the first to have the Skull Kid use whips, the same weapon used by the Majora boss fight's final form, Majora's Wrath. It'll have him do one of the same attacks done by that boss, spinning two whips low to the ground, dealing multi-hitting damage to foes before launching them away. Now, they say if you look up to the moon at night, you can see the Skull Kid's aerial attacks. Starting with his neutral air, a bunch of creepy tentacles grow out from behind the mask and Skull Kid starts spinning with the mask facing the screen. Foes hit by these tentacles will need a therapist and will also be dealt a lot of multi-hitting damage before being launched with the final hit. This move references one of the first attacks done by Majora during the first phase of his boss fight. The forward air can have Skull Kid conjure two whips in his hands again and whip them forward one at a time, turning into a two-hit attack that'll combo into itself, generally launching foes with the second whip and dealing extra damage if you can land that sweet spot at the tip of the whips. For the back air, he backhands you, just like he does to poor tail in every timeline when you confront him right before the moon crashes. He turns around swinging his arm horizontally, launching foes into straighter angles. The up air can have Skull Kid start dancing in the moonlight, doing pirouette spins just like Majora's incarnation does. He spins multiple times with his arms pointing up. His whole body deals multi-hitting damage, then launches foes upward. And his hands act as a sweet spot, dealing more damage and launching foes up into straighter angles. And for the down air, Skull Kid can start leaving footprints on the moon with one of his temper tantrums, stopping his feet downward multiple times. Again, this is a move that deals multiple hits of damage before launching with the final hit. While throwing tantrums is something Skull Kid is more than likely prone to do, this attack is one of the few that references something we see from the Skull Kid in Twilight Princess, where he stomps his feet on the ground the more and more aggravated he gets with Link. To grab opponents, he uses one of his whips, acting as a long-range tether grab, wrapping up opponents in the whip and pulling them close, mimicking a move done by Majora's Wrath during the final phase of his boss fight. He'll pummel by headbutting his victim, shoving the mask into their face. For the forward throw, he spins the foe still wrapped in the whip, then slams them into the ground in front of himself to bounce them into the air forward. This throw references one of the moves that Link wearing the giant's mask can actually do to twin mold in the 3DS remake of Majora's Mask. The back throw can just have Skull Kid chuck the foe backward out of the whip, a move that Majora's Wrath does to Link whenever he does grab him. The up throw can have Skull Kid conjure a dark whirlwind under the foe that shoots them into the air. This references a part of Skull Kid's fourth heavy attack in Hyrule Warriors, and the down throw can have Skull Kid start strangling his ensnared foe by squeezing them in the whip, then slams them into the ground to bounce them away. This references the other move that Giant's Mask Link can do to Twin Mold. Now for Skull Kid's special attacks. He'll be drawing from the dreadful power that he cast all across the land of Termina to make its residents as miserable as possible. The power of his curses. As mentioned before, Majora's Mask was used in hexing rituals, so casting curses is nothing new for it. And as a measure to deal with the only beings that could possibly stop his plan, Skull Kid targeted the four corners of Termina where they resided, the Southern Swamp, the Northern Mountain, the Western Ocean, and the Eastern Canyon. He cursed each of those areas, leaving behind masks that sealed the four giants and upheld the curses laid on the land. For this moveset, Skull Kid will be making use of those four mask remains to cast those curses once again. So starting with his neutral special, Skull Kid dons the remains of Odalwa, the jungle warrior used to curse the Southern Woodfall Temple and poison the waters of its swamp. From the mask, it spits moths from its mouth that fly straight forwards a set distance. You can hold the button down to continuously spit moths, though Skull Kid can't move while you do this. These moths are very weak, dealing negligible damage and no hit stun whatsoever if they collide with foes. 
However, foes who are touched by any of these moths will be poisoned, so it's a move that can rack up damage on opponents very quickly if they aren't careful. On top of that, the time foes remain poisoned will reset every time they get hit by even one moth, making them wish that they didn't leave their bug spray at home. Next for Skull Kid's side special, he dons the remains of goats. Really? Goat? That's, that's all they can come up with? The mechanical monster used to curse the Northern Snowhead Temple and keep Snowhead Mountain in a permanent winter. I mean, let's be real though, they kinda had it coming when they literally named their mountain Snowhead. Just like Goat himself, this attack is pretty simple. While wearing the mask, Skull Kid does a charging dash straight forward, and any foe in his way will be frozen and launched away. It can also be used for horizontal recovery, but Skull Kid will go into freefall if used in the air. For Skull Kid's up special, he dons the remains of Twin Mold, the giant insect used to curse the Eastern Stone Tower Temple, causing the dead who resided there to grow restless. While wearing the mask, Skull Kid will start flying into a straight direction while his body wiggles like a worm. Offensively, this is a pretty weak move, only dealing small damage and popping foe as the attack collides with the way. But foes hit by this will be afflicted with the curse status, the same usually done to Link by the undead enemies in the Zelda games. This version of curse, however, will reverse the foe's directional input, something we also see Skull Kid do as an assist trophy. It doesn't last for very long, but sometimes a couple of seconds is all that's needed to mess someone up pretty badly. And lastly, for Skull Kid's down special, he dons the remains of Gjorg, the gargantuan fish used to curse the western Great Bay Temple, causing the ocean to become too murky and warm to be habitable by anything but only the most dangerous creatures. He wears the mask and from its mouth spits forwards a large black cloud that remains suspended in that spot for a limited time. You cannot see anything under this cloud, including the dangerous fish swimming around within it. Any foe who steps inside of this cloud take constant damage from the fish, racking up percents very quickly if they stay in it for too long. So overall, Skull Kid isn't much of a brute force character. He's all about messing with his opponents with dirty tactics and nasty curses, slowly whittling them down with mischief and torture over time. Then, once his foes are broken and battered, that's when he goes in for the big kill, ending it all in one fell swoop. Speaking of which... For the Skull Kid's final smash! He does none other but annihilates his enemies with the apocalyptic moon drop! Now, I actually have two ideas for this one, so pick your favorite. The first is literally just recreating the Moon Drop Assist Trophy, except you can aim the moon yourself while Skull Kid remains stationary and invincible. Self-explanatory. The second idea is a cinematic Final Smash, starting with Skull Kid releasing a burst of dark magic and all foes hit by it will be pulled in. The cinematic plays out with an epic shot of Skull Kid using his magic to pull the moon down, and it recreates the game over scene of Majora's Mask, showing all foes take big damage as they're being blown away, which then launches the foes away after the cinematic ends. For the Skull Kid's alternate colors, his first few can be color alts that actually come from Hyrule Warriors, with the first having Skull Kid in the Great Sea costume, a purple and white costume that could be referencing his fairy companions, Tattle and Tail, though this could also be referencing the moon children found inside of the moon. His second alt can be his Grand Travels costume, which is a silver and dark purple outfit, which could be in reference to the Happy Mask Salesman himself, though some Poes also have this color scheme. The next is the Low Rule costume, sporting white, maroon, and dark blues, a direct reference to the Masked Elder seen in A Link Between Worlds. Then the final costume to come from Hyrule Warriors is the Koholint costume, putting Skull Kid in a green and yellow outfit, which more than likely is referencing Deku Scrubs. Now for the remaining three colors, I figured I'd go ahead and expand how there's a Deku Scrub color and make the next ones reference the other transformation masks, with the first of those three having yellow and brown colors, in reference to the Gorons. Then here's a light blue and white color, referencing the Zora. And finally, here's a monochrome gray suit, referencing the Giant Mask. 
For his stage intro, the Skull Kid literally just fades in with magic, with Majora's Mask appearing first, then the Skull Kid soon after, just like he does when first appearing to Link in the Lost Woods at the beginning of Majora's Mask. For the taunts, his first just has Skull Kid turn and slap his butt forwards, the same taunting gesture that he does to you while looking at him through the telescope. His second has him pull out the ocarina that he stole from Link, which is fine, not like Link's using it in Smash anyway. He then blows into it a single time and starts <laughs> chuckling, the same thing that Skull Kid does after stealing it from Link at the beginning of his game. And the third can show Skull Kid hold his head and start struggling in pain, showing him trying to resist the mask's dark power. And finally, for the Skull Kid's victory animations, his first can show him just floating there staring at the camera with a lax-armed crossed pose, and Majora's mask starts shaking with dark effects emitting from it, as if he's cursing his fallen prey. His second can show the little snot start laughing and pointing, overjoyed and mocking you over his victory. And his final can show the Skull Kid floating limply off of the mask, only for it to shake him off and just float there staring at the camera. With the Skull Kid's usefulness worn out, Majora is now ready to take matters into its own hands. Well, it doesn't really have hands yet, but whatever, you know what I mean. And that does it for What If The Skull Kid Was In Smash! So, if you enjoyed what you saw and would like to see even more characters be given possible Smash movesets, be sure to subscribe! And if you want to support the show and help me be able to make more content for you guys, you can click the join button either below the video or my main page to become a sponsor for my channel. Doing so will get you access to my Discord server as well as channel emotes. You can guarantee that your name appears in my videos or even get the option of knowing what What If character is coming up next a week in advance. I really appreciate anything that can be contributed. And of course, if you have a character that you want to see be given a possible Smash moveset, leave a comment down below or contact me on Twitter at BrawlFan1 on Twitch. I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching!